Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. Today I would like to tell you about a very, very famous um, theorem, which as far as I know has never been translated. So at least not into English. Um, so Hilbert's Nullstellensatz, which is German and which roughly mean the zero locus theorem. So now I'm actually pretty curious whether that has translated has been translated into other languages. Um, so maybe, yeah, let's, let's just maybe just ask Dr. Google. So Hilbert's Nullstellensatz, um, let's see. So uh, the English version is indeed Hilbert's Nullstellensatz. Let me zoom in for you a little bit. Um, so what well, theorem of zeros, theorem of zeros. No, that that's a bad translation. Zero locus theorem is better. Yeah. Let me just check um, whether it has been translated to other languages. Maybe something um, like French. We'll see. Um, nope, I don't want to translate the page. I need to zoom in again. Ah, it's also called the Nullstellen. Let's see. Uh, okay, so maybe it has been translated into some other languages. Maybe not. Not so important. I, I don't know an English translation but except the zero locus theorem. So if you know anything about uh, the Hilbert Nullstellen that's in various languages, uh, let me know. I would be, uh, it would be lovely to actually know that. Anyway, what is it, right? That's the whole topic. So what is this Hilbert Nullstellensatz? And yeah, well, let's go through it. Essentially, it should relate, we'll see that, um, to those two guys, if you remember what these are, uh, the variety construction and the ideal construction. So they kind of do the opposite. So remember, we had this picture last time um, that the variety applied to the ideal applied to X should be X and the other way around if you apply. So here we have one of them. And the other way around, if you apply the ideal and the variety of some ideal, then it should be P. So the ideal P itself, P for ideal in polynomials, by the way. Um, so I would, don't want like to write I because the I is I and that gets too confusing if, you, if I write I of I. Uh, so P is for me always an ideal in uh, polynomials. So I don't like I of I somewhat. Um, anyway, so this should be true. Somewhat in some way or form, and Hilbert's Nullstellensatz will actually tell us uh, in what sense this is wrong or in what sense uh, this is true. And essentially, the main observation I can fit the main observation on one slide in one illustration. And as soon as you understand this main observation, it's actually not so difficult anymore to prove the theorem. We'll see what it is uh, as we go along. Um, namely, if you have a variety like my little hyperbola here and you have the given by some polynomial so that I have used this in Mathematica and I just set up the polynomial and yeah, so I also set up the cube of the polynomial and up to some uh, low resolution, which I didn't want it to fix because I wanted to make sure that these are really two different pictures that I generated, but we can also just uh, pull it in if you want, if you want to have a look at the polynomial. So I have a set up a polynomial that looks like an hyperbola and I set up the cube of the polynomial so here's the polynomial itself. Here's the cube. Don't worry too much about the resolution. You would, you can increase the resolution if you want, but I kind of want to make sure that these are really uh, two different plots generated by uh, two different polynomials. So that's what I did. Just set that up. And yeah, they're exactly the same. Yeah, so the variety of f and the variety of f cubed in this case, they are really the same. And in, in general, the, the vanishing sets, the v's, of f and f to the n should be always uh, be the same and up to some nonsense with complex numbers where those real numbers, this is actually really the case. Let me just zoom in for a second into um, this idea. Well, if something essentially, if something is a root of something like x minus a, so a would be a root of x minus a, but a is also a root of x minus a squared and a is a root of x minus a cubed and so on. And we really can't tell the difference here. So some other variety construction is blind towards the powers, towards the multiplicities of a, of, a, of a root, if you want. We eventually need to fix that, by the way. But for now, it just is blind towards uh, the multiplicities of the roots. And that's all I'm saying here. So the vanishing sets are the same. Um, up to this nonsense with complex numbers, which I at least want to mention once here. So here, what I did is I plotted the level sets so instead of um, f equals zero, I can just plot f and then it spits out the level. So this is f equals zero, for example. This is a equals zero. 
and then there's a equals one and a equals whatever just goes up as you can see here from the scale goes up and down and if you do that for the square you get a somewhat different picture and this is really just because the real numbers are kind of not the real the, the real <laughs> the real numbers are not real there you go the real numbers are not real in case you wonder so who believes in square root of two anyway um the real numbers are not kind of not the correct field to see this behavior because some of real numbers are kind of bad with even powers if you want if you just think of a polynomial like x squared plus one it doesn't have too many real roots yeah so this equals zero a little bit of a problem so usually uh, this is what people call algebraically closed so the polynomials over the real numbers don't have as many roots as they should have and that's why um, we probably actually want to work with an algebraically closed field which in practice mostly means you want to work with something like the complex numbers. Um, yeah, so the real numbers are not real. Who believes in square root of two anyway? Come on, come on, come on. Who believes in square root of two? You might argue that the complex numbers are not real. Who believes in I? Yeah, yeah fair enough. <laughs> but anyway, so let's just move ahead. And Hilbert Nullstellen that is then the theorem that V and I are inverse operations up to that you need to kind of ignore the multiplicities. So one direction, it works out so vix equals x the other direction almost works out because we are kind of blind towards the multiplicities of a polynomial we always kind of pick out the the, the small the, the biggest ideal was it right well hopefully that was right the one where which is called a radical ideal we'll go to that in a second so the inverse operation iv is not quite identity but it's identity up to in kind of ignoring uh, multiplicities and this funny, funny symbol here is really just called the radical for the reason that the root was, I think, historically called the radical, and the root is just a radical, so it's called the radical ideal uh, in this case. And this really only works over algebraically closed fields for the reasons that kind of I tried to illustrate on the previous slide. So sometimes over well, the real numbers, polynomials don't tend to have the roots that they are supposed to have, and this kind of gets then a little bit wrong one more reason to study algebraically closed fields. So in general, algebraic geometry really likes algebraically closed fields. I don't like algebraically closed fields. I like illustrations. I also don't like the real numbers. I just like plots. So <laughs> let's just say it this way. I just like plots and well, plotting, plotting equations is usually in complex numbers is usually like tricky because complex is always twice. Complex dimension is always twice real dimension. So complex dimension one is real dimension two. So complex dimension two, the first interesting plot is real dimension four, and I would need to illustrate a four-dimensional plot, which is some some version of putting in some colors or something. So that it actually works. It's it's not as scary as it sounds like. You can illustrate four-dimensional plots, but at least for my brain, it doesn't work that well anymore. So I usually stay with the real plots. But here's an, another reason why you don't you usually don't want to work with real numbers. You really want to work with complex numbers or some algebraic and closed field. Anyway, so this is a pretty cool theorem. It kind of um, explains, let me, let me just say they inverse operations up to the multiplicity thing that we kind of can't see right now and that we eventually certainly need to address that we're kind of missing uh, the multiplicities in this approach. It's not, 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 not bad a priori, but it's not fantastic. So eventually we need to address that. And what it really says is the following, well, Okay, what it really says is that there's a bijection between varieties and radical ideals. Radical ideals are the, the ones where the radical operation is trivial. So there's a bijection between those two sets, and the i and the v are actually the bijections, and they're inverses on those sets. That's what it really says. So it identifies, that's what we wanted to do all the time, it identifies varieties, the geometrical objects with um, algebraic objects. Not quite ideals, because of this multiplicity issue, but some of these radical ideals. The only middle mild catch that is always, always confusing is that this is order reversing, because remember from last time, um, if the variety, sorry, if the ideal gets bigger, the variety gets smaller. So here was F, and here's G, and if you put both together, the variety is really just the intersection of those, so just those four points. And if the ideal gets smaller, like you take the product, uh, so here, then the variety would be the union in this case, so the variety gets bigger. And that's why this bijection is order reversing. So the only confusing part is this order reversing, 
just keep in mind that the variety gets really tiny if you have many polynomials because you need to vanish on all of them. Actually pretty simple to remember. Anyway, this was the Nullstellensatz. As I said, I would be kind of, I probably should have <laughs> did this in preparation for the video, but it would be nice to know if in other languages it's still Nullstellensatz and it was never uh, really translated. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.